Hi guys, welcome to another painting walkthrough. Again, as always, thank you for um, subscribing and supporting me. It's really appreciated. So this image is, it was really was an idea that I'd, I had because I was becoming quite frustrated with really a lot of admin work that had to be done in terms of, you know, getting um, hashtags and understanding how to build my art business and things like that. And I got quite frustrated and my wife had just come home from work and I said, actually, you know what, I just want to paint. I don't, I don't want to do anything else. And it just struck me. I said, uh, I was just sort of looking at her, she was doing the washing up and I said, stay there. Um, and I got her to pose and I took a photo from a, from a high up angle, which you can see on the right. And I said, right, I'm going to go away and paint now. So I took this uh, upstairs, uh, got to work and just started sketching the form really. As much as anything, it was actually really good, turned out to be really good practice um, just for trying to interpret um, a sketch rather than, oh, a, a, a picture, sorry, rather than sort of tracing over it. So I, I was quite disciplined in the fact that I didn't actually trace it. I just observed the face and drew it. And, and it's surprising how much more informative that can be because you learn how things work and how shadows work, how the angle as well the perspective works because obviously I'm, I took a picture from uh, from high up and so it was it, I think to draw it would be quite difficult particularly if you have a look at the lips the way the lips are I don't think I would have assumed that that's how the lips work until I actually observed them in this way granted at the moment it looks a little bit like a like a fish um, it does improve I promise you um, I'm actually using the cyberpunk Tokyo um color palette on the side there remember you can download all my color palettes however as you'll see towards the end that, that color palette modifies quite a bit i started painting the, the, the face in blue I, I, I don't think i quite understand why um because uh, I, I think it was just the main colors in this uh, in this color palette and i thought well let's 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 paint in blue and let's see what else happens uh, let's imagine that there's a blue light shining down but um it does have its use, mainly just using the, the, the light and dark values of the colour just to um, get the shape and the form of the face at the moment. If you notice, I zoomed in a lot more than I had done on the uh, actual picture, so I wanted a much closer up image of the face. So I, want, I actually wanted to get more detail in the face than I did in terms of the body, and this was a, a, this was a good study for me really. Using my uh, oil brush here to paint in um, these values, you can see it's it's actually quite a nice brush in terms of the um, the sweep that it gives you. And what I mean by sweep is, as you brush along, because it's got um, some smoothing applied as well. Um, what tends to happen is that the last part of the stroke, as you as you've stroked it, um, is a very very smooth blended sort of uh, gradient that it gives. It's very very smooth. The first part of the uh, the brush motion actually is quite harsh and round, and and bristly. But the last part is like a, a very very uh, sort of nice fall off, if you will, of the paint. So it's a really nice brush to use in this particular instance, particularly when you're doing faces and you need that sort of gradient um, to the shading in some cases. Getting the detail in the eyes here, I'm much closer to the eyes uh, than I am in the photo. Um, what you'll notice is I've still got the perspective of that that close-up eye wrong. So it's a little bit too front on. Uh, and I actually have to reshape it a little bit later on so that it, it looks like it's sitting into the sort of that, that indentation on the face rather than just on the surface. So much that I learned about shading the face on this particular image. The, the lighting that I've taken um, the photo in was very bright. Um, so we've got just behind where the photo is taken, there's like spotlights in the kitchen. And it's creating very, very harsh lighting on, on her face. But actually that throws up some really interesting shadows, particularly around the eyes. Um, so I really just like sort of started to use that. One thing I do a little bit too much of in this particular image is I overshade, so I, I go a little bit too harsh between the, the lights and darks in, in the wrong places, so I do have to pull those back towards the end. You can see everything's looking very blue, but the face is starting to look more and more believable. It doesn't, unfortunately, look like um, 
the photo on the right in terms of the features, um, but certainly the shadow, um, the, the the forms of the face, they're all there. The perspective is is getting there. It's improving. So that's that's a good thing. Starting to play with interesting casts of light here. Not sure if this actually works too well in the end, but um, I do use it. Is it because of the strokes are a bit too harsh? I do blur those for a gradient as well. One thing I did change about the um, the face was um, she's slightly smiling in the po the photo on the right, and I've I've got a little bit more of a worried look, I guess. Uh, on the face uh, that I'm painting and I, I really like the sweeping of the hair because it, it looks like she's mid-action turning around someone's chasing her there's something urgent going on there you can see I'm adjusting the eye and making it inset a little bit better and if you notice on the photo you can see how I'm mimicking that shadow it's like a a harsh shadow that goes straight up to the eyebrow and that's something again you don't realize how light works until you actually observe it um, I wouldn't have guessed that, that there would be just a harsh line of shadow there, but it, it actually works. It's getting the eyebrow in place. Working on that shoulder. It's supposed to be a shoulder. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's sort of like a very, very faint uh, top part of the shoulder in there. Um, trying to, I'm just playing with light here because I, I start to realise midway through the painting I've painted a blue and I'm not sure it's going to work. So I, I start to add in other colours. I start to play with tones um, and hues just to see if I can sort of bring this back or to make the blue work. And really it was a problem with the background. The background was very harsh red. Uh, and that contrast was too too much for the face. So the face looked like basically like an alien face. The, the blue didn't look natural. Um, it didn't look like it was coming because of the it was it was being cast because of lighting. It just looked like the skin itself was blue, so that was a, a big issue to get around. Um, I do get around it eventually um, and and basically change it, but it, you, you'll see that a little bit later on. Decided to paint in a little bit of uh, built sort of buildings here in the background, but there's one massive thing I'd forgotten, and if you notice, but the perspective of the image is down, and these buildings are looking up. We're looking up at these buildings um, and so there's a complete mismatch here and so I realise that and delete them very, very quickly. Still playing around with what other colours might work as a background. Can I get this blue to, blue face to work? But ultimately I have to give up on that a little bit. Play around quite a lot with uh, hues and uh, colour lookups a little bit later on as I try and get that right. Still um, in its infancy, really. I, at this point, I think I looked at the image while I painted it and then went away and I thought, wow, oh, that looks really good. I think I'm, I'm close to posting that, close to putting that out there. But I came back and realised, no, there's just there's way too much that needs doing. Um, there's a lot that hadn't been considered. As a very quick study, then it's OK. It's, it's fine. But if I wanted to make this an actual final image that I was happy to put out there, I was happy to have as a print that I would put onto sale, um, then I needed to put a lot more work into into this one. So see, I'm playing around with maybe having some kind of red illuminations on the face. I'd, I'd looked up quite a bit, um, some images that were under blue lighting, and they'd contrasted it quite well with red, like a red light. So the blues were the shadows and the reds were kind of the highlights. Just playing around with that. And what often happens with me is I play around with stuff and it leads me to something that I hadn't imagined origi originally. So you can see here, that's given me some lighting that I didn't initially realise would work, but actually it really works. Getting in some quite harsh shadows on the cheeks now. Um, I do tone those down later. And then now I'm starting to figure out the background. So I'm trying to think, do I draw a city in the background? The main thing I had to do was cut around because I'd drawn the background first and hadn't separated everything. I had to go back to my old Photoshop days and actually cut around and really separate this face so I could draw in a background without really being hindered. So I put this all on a separate layer, masked it out. Uh, not on a separate layer, I put the background on a separate layer and then used this as a mask so that I could just paint in without any obstacles. So you see I'm just experimenting with different shapes, different colours, trying to think of a horizon, how would it work. So I start to get this idea of a horizon like this 
Um, still the colours, that red sky isn't working. She still looks very, very blue. But there's a perspective that I've got there which works. Adding a bit more shade under the nose. Every now and then you, you'll look back at it and think, no, I haven't got that right. That's not working. Um, so I'm trying to add in a few harsher shadows to the lips as well. I think Ross Draws calls some of these highlights uh, instant gratification highlights as well. So that little spot on the nose and the little spots on the on the lip um, start to make it feel a bit more lifelike. And then I sort of thought of drawing some main roads with traffic zooming past them. So I start painting this in, start painting a sunset in. Here you can see the colours are completely mismatched. So there's, there's, a, there's a big problem here. There's far too many colours going on. Um, but I'm just experimenting. And then I start painting in the idea of buildings. And you'll start to see that these buildings make it look like a very residential area. This looks like a bunch of houses. And um, it just didn't have a very powerful look to it, it looked very ordinary um, and so it, I, I ultimately got rid of it however it did give me the idea for what what comes next so here I'm trying to put in some high-rise buildings and think okay am I going to be able to make this work but ultimately no it's still not working but the perspective is definitely correct on this there's definitely a feeling of her looking down on top of something she's not looking down but the, the, the angle is and so I found this image um, of Korea on Adobe Stock brought that in got the perspective right still had that road running through it but it was just much more dramatic much more lights and better than I could paint uh, unfortunately so I, I went with it added a paint dobs filter to it put some um, field blur on there to give a sort of a bo the, the bokeh and then I went and painted over the top of it uh, using my um, I think the oil brush there just to paint over the top and just make it look much more painterly. But still, there's there's a colour mismatch here. Um, the blue face definitely isn't going to work. And I'm still toying with it, thinking, can I make it work somehow? Is there some magic filter that I'm going to put on top that will suddenly make it work? So you can see I'm adding a bit of a sort of a secondary bit of glow of red lighting there to see if it can actually do something. Um, if it was an alien or if it was, um, I've forgotten the character's name on X-Men now, um, but if it was something like a mutant or something like that, then maybe it would work, but it wasn't really what I was going for. Um, so that was a, that was a decision I had to make. Adding in a few highlights to the hair as well, the edges of the hair. And then playing with colour balance. Still trying to make everything sit in and work, and really it's about melding the foreground and the background. And that's one of the reasons I use a colour lookup because actually what that does is it applies a, a uniform feel to the whole image. So let's say I've got far too many colours going on. Adding this colour lookup table can actually bring everything a bit more, make it a bit more cohesive, tone down some of the harsher colours. And you see I'm starting to see uh, like experiment with this one tone of blue that's coming through. So the city is almost glowing in this kind of maybe blue sort of tealy look here. Having a mess around through blending mode as I always do. Because sometimes I just feel that the blending mode will have the answer for me. I think a few more highlights. Still, if you look, um, uh, good practice is because I've always got the navigator open is look at the thumbnail. If the thumbnail starts to not look pleasing to you, it looks a bit odd. Um, then that's a sign. Um, and it actually gives you a really good uh, perspective on your painting and I noticed actually here that the shadows were, were still far too harsh on the on the cheek not on the head I think they were fine for the head you also notice I brought in the skin tones as well so I, I changed the hue of the face and that's made the hate the face look much more realistic it's got kind of a, a browner tone to it more realistic skin adding a few more shadows in there just to get the shape right Playing with the sharpening, as I always do with uh, the raw filter, texture, clarity, and then messing around a little bit with the uh, colour profiles as well. What I tend to do with colour profiles is I favourite, you can press the little star in the corner there, and I favourite a few of them, and then I flick between that and the original to make a decision. Now you can see I'm adding, using the, the colour dodger there, just to um, the airbrush dodger, just to add a bit of glow to it. I've added my signature, but I don't think I'm quite done yet. There's still a few things that will be done. I actually bring in some painterly textures, so like very rough canvas images that I've got from Adobe Stock. 
Um, and I sort of duplicate those and put them all on the top and just experiment with how they work. And what it does actually, it removes this very digital bland gradient look that you can get from blending colours a bit too much, particularly like I've done on the cheek here. Um, and it makes it feel like it's been painted on a canvas or just adds some stroke brush strokes that you wouldn't normally get, particularly with Photoshop or any type of digital paint. Um, it makes it look like there's got depth to it. And and I really like the look that it gave at the end of it. I was very, very pleased with it. Um, brightened the face there as well a little bit, as you can see, brightened under the eye a little bit, but still got that contrast in the shadow in the distance and still that kind of like glowing blue light in the distance as well, just on the side of that cheek in the dis in the end of the far cheek there so all in all really really pleased with this really happy with it um, remember you can download all these images so do check them out and i'll see you on the next one